Good evening and welcome to the Sunday show. I'm your host Sadia. This is my first show so I'm excited um, because we've got a jam-packed show and with me I've got a very exciting guest. We've got Yasmin Hussein. She's a work coach, she's a mother, she's so many other things and um, we're going to get to know her a little bit more um, about her career. Currently she's at an amazing position in her career and we're just going to get to know her a little bit more. Hello Yasmin. Hello, how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you very much. Yeah, and um, so I've, I've spoken to you a little bit before the show and I'm actually so excited to introduce you guys to introduce you to our viewers. If you want to tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, so I'm Yasmin Hussain, I'm a football coach. I've uh, been coaching just over four years. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a club called Fremford and MSA Women's FC based in Redbridge, uh, actually not far from here. Yeah. Um, I've been coaching there just going three years. Um, yeah, I got into coaching through an FA Level 1 course done by Essex FA oh, wow. and Muslim Sports Association just to get more women into coaching, especially within the BME background, uh, Muslim women as well. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so since then, um, I coach now uh, over 100 girls a week. I go into schools, rugby schools, um, also FA um, community champion, FA oh. mentor. So, um, yes. So. That's so huge. And just by listening to all of that, there's so much to take in. So, Yasmin, I want to know, like, you know, you're coaching 100 girls a week. Obviously, you didn't just become work um, a sports coach overnight. I've read a lot about you. You've won so many awards. I just want you to list a little few <laughs> and let the viewers know a little bit about that. Yeah, um, not so many, um, but yeah. Um, so I've won um, a six county FA grassroots coach of the year. Mm -hmm. um, that was last year. Uh, won Asian sport list coaching category um, also last year. Recent one was the National Award BT um, Sports uh, Community Award, um, BT Action Woman Award, and that was in December. Um, yeah, so I've won those three uh, awards and I've just won ones for my um, club and stuff. But yeah, they're the three major awards. That's huge. And obviously we're going to get into a little bit about where you are right now. But before we do, um, you know, you said you're coaching 100 kids a week. Average, yeah, about Average. 100, yeah, with the schoolwork and everything, yeah. But you told me very something very interesting. It's not just girls, it's also boys. Yeah, I do some boys as well. On the Saturdays, I coach um, boys sessions as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, you being a young Muslim Bangladeshi woman in this, um, you know, industry sector, like, that is so huge. Like, what does that mean to you? Like, getting here, like, you know, how has that been? What are the obstacles that you faced? Oh, amazing journey. I didn't expect, you know, to having this. When I started, I knew it wasn't going to be easy because I've never seen anyone that looked like me yeah. doing that. I've not even seen a female coach, you know, Muslim or a South, you know, a South Asian. So, um, yeah, uh, it wasn't it wasn't easy. Uh, first ever session was a hard session. It was boys. Um, Fathers, parents were looking at me like, what does she even no. know what she's doing? I lacked confidence. Oh, yeah. I, you can tell my body language, I was nervous, I was scared. Um, first experience wasn't very great. Um, I struggled to get players. Um, I, I did question it, am I doing the right thing? Because mm -hmm. when I went to the club, it was just boys. So there's no girls. Is there a demand for it? Am yeah. I, is it? You know, is this there a need for girls to mm -hmm. go coach and do they want to play football? So I mean, it was it was difficult, but um, it's great now. Um, I mean, I've managed to grow with the support from um, my club. It's I mean, I'm getting a lot of spotlight, but a lot of the work has been done with three pe um, three people. So mm -hmm. they're at Fremford and MSA. So it's here, Yashmin Haroon, Irfan Shah, and Neil Akhtar, amazing. And their love of football mm -hmm. has actually got me to the position I am. They grew confidence in me they gave me opportunities yeah. I mean most of the things basically is done by them three and I mean I'm, I'm getting the spotlight for it but they've just worked so much hard just to make me the person I am today wow that's amazing before we get into more conversation we're just going to watch a little video clip um you just a little bit in action so guys we're going to watch a little video clip um yeah I'm the coach here. I got into coaching, it's been just over four years. We have three teams in the Super 5 League. Uh, we have uh, 11 aside league as well. It's grown, we've got Wildcat sessions all the way to ladies session. 
I really wanted to just give my community an opportunity and the younger girls to start playing football again. It's much more than just playing football, it's like a sisterhood. They feel that they belong here. Got to age 13, my dad said, look, you're the only girl. You can play if you find a woman's only session with female coach. That was over 21 years ago, it's impossible. It's really good, yeah, I like the material. It makes me feel like I can play football without, there, there's no barriers to when it comes to playing football. Wow, Yasmin, that's so amazing. You talk about barriers, and honestly, you are breaking barriers. Like, that's just amazing to see. Um, for me, I get so excited when I see women, like Bangladeshi Muslim women, kind of, like, do that in our community. It's really breaking those stereotypes. Um, I want to know a little bit about the sessions. You talk about the Wildcat sessions, and then what, what kind of sessions do you kind of do? Yeah, so uh, the Wildcat session is just to get girls uh, in involved before, you know, main competitive football sort of thing. So it's more, it's this uh, session's designed to get them be, um, start of a football journey. So that's from the younger ages. Um, so yeah, they, they love this, this session. So I do that on a Monday. And then that follows up by another session I do for old, older 12 plus. And then I go all the way to ladies, um, which is rec sessions. We do some with the teams, team training. Then we have we have loads of different type of people playing. Some want to play just for social. Some mm. want to play for fitness. Someone want to be good football players. So yeah, yeah we tailor for every sort of need in our yeah. sessions. Oh, well, and like, what is the process like? So how do you select, or how do you like? Do you go in tournaments or like? What is the process like? So our training is open to anyone for any ability from, you know, um, complete beginners to, uh, so that you just turn up and pay three pounds at the, the session and just play for one and a half hours. You know, there's no just register um, a drop in session. And then we have uh, the league and um, we have three different um, abilities. So whichever one you suit, we'll, we'll put you in that going up and down, um, depending on how you improve and stuff. Yeah. And we yeah. always have tour tournaments. I always register them in any tournaments because the girls love it. Yeah, and is there currently any tournaments going on? I've got one booked for the 25, uh, 24th of July, and there's one on the 16th as well, so yeah. Oh, wow. That's yeah. huge. Yeah. And is it against like local other organisations or? Yeah, so whoever, yeah, so they, they're just whichever club's interested, they just put their names on and we just play, yeah. Oh, wow, that's amazing. And you talk a little bit about sisterhood. So tell me, what, like, what does that look like, like being a coach? And I guess it's not just being a coach. I guess you have to kind of play that friend role at some point. Um, so how does that look like? Yeah, I mean, uh, with me, before I became a coach, I was actually a player. Uh, some of these, some of these are my teammates, and you know I've got a good relationship with them. Um, you, you, it's important to have that friendship relationship, and they can talk to me about stuff. And mm. you know that sisterhood. We're all you know like a family. We can see yeah. each other. We you know go and go places together. We talk to stuff. So it's brilliant. Yeah. But honestly, looking at that video, you can just completely see the natural like chemistry between your group and that's not something easy yeah. to kind of just attain just like that. You spoke a little bit about your father and you spoke about you know the barriers you mentioned something about the barriers in the little clip that we watched like mm. tell me about that. Yeah so when I was younger I used to always play football um, mm -hmm. at the time none of the girls wanted to play football none of my friends I couldn't get them to play yeah. football so I used to just play with my brothers and his oh. friends just um, on, the, on the road and the park and stuff and mm -hmm. that wasn't an issue I've been playing for a long time until I got to the age of 13 and yeah my dad's saying look you know they're all, all boys you know you're a girl the only girl there you're growing up it's you know it's, it doesn't look great um so you know and he knew I loved it you know and I can carry on if I can find a female coach because I used to play netball and mm. um, that wasn't an issue because that was in a school setting in mm -hmm. a female coach in a female environment yeah. something like that that's what he said you know and I couldn't find it so I kind of just gave it up but that was a barrier is that you know I didn't have the female um, coach in a female environment and that's the reason I stopped. Mm, oh, and like at what point in your career you said um, you know like at what point did you see you know what I can actually see myself going somewhere because you are here you've you know you're breaking that barrier like you've done so much and your work speaks for itself so at what point in your career like did that point come to you that you know what I can actually see myself doing something here 
it just it just happened so fast. I don't actually know because um, yeah. when I did do it, I mean, I've always wanted to break the barriers, change the stereotypes. But I mean, I never imagined I'd be having the journey I am so quick. I thought it'll be a long process. I mean, like I said, it's four years and it's just the, the journey has been amazing. It's just one after another and, you know, a lot of things. And um, the, it's good. To, I've seen so many mindsets and the community has changed. Um, girls want to play. There's a demand for it. People want to get into coaching. I've got uh, so many women now signed up to the co coaching course. So it's yeah. so positive. And, you know, when I, after I think the first session when we got the five and then more important people were interested, I knew that, you know, there's a demand for it, it's going to be a good journey. Yeah. You know what, after speaking to you, I actually want to sign up. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> <laughs> definitely. I think we I don't want, do. Yeah, Because a lot of people are saying that because it's not just about, you know, playing, it's a social element. And if yeah. you go there, the buzz in our club, amazing. But, you mm -hmm. know, if you just go there, the people that you go just for one session, try out, they never, you know, they always come back, you, they don't leave, you know, it's something really infectious and it's a brilliant buzz at the club. Mm -hmm. No, that's crazy. Um, COVID happened, what was the transition like? COVID happened, um, well, I did actually do some uh, work online. We did some coaching <laughs> online, oh. so yeah, like all you need is a ball, really. I did yeah. uh, did some coaching for MSA online, so we did um, once a week. I used to just get them a ball and do basic drills around the house or in the garden. That kept them going, a bit of social, so that that was important. Um, yeah, so I tried to do that, but it, it was, COVID was hard, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was it was crazy and it's flown by so fast. Um, with like, currently, right now, you're only based in London. Uh, London, yes. Yeah. So I'm based in London, but um, I do some work just outside of my borough and stuff. So I've been helping another club in Surrey. Um, yeah, so I am just based in London at the moment. Yeah. Mm. Speaking of London, Commonwealth Games, we're just going to watch a little video because you're at an amazing point in your career at the moment. So we're just going to watch a little video and come back and speak to Yasmin further. That is such a huge moment, Yasmin. Honestly, the Queen's um, torch. So you, you're the torch bearer. Yeah. Yeah. How how did that happen? Actually, I was nominated by um, Yasmin Haroon, who was uh, MSA, um, uh, well, who I did the course through FA Level One course through. So I'm. Um, that's where I started my coaching journey through her, and she's been a big part of my. Uh, um, journey and she's also with the club I'm with now, Frankfurt and MSA Women's FC and yeah she nominated me for the work wow. I'm doing and yeah so uh, amazing yeah. So do you just need that one nomination like how does it work? Yeah I think it's just that one nomination and then the panel see it and if they find it it's for um, anyone that they think is making um, an inspiration in the community. Yeah. Um, I think it was they received over 8,000 applications, um, 2,000 get to um, be it throughout the whole of the UK. And uh, luckily um, I was the one of the nine um, for the unveiling, so um, amazing. That's so crazy, and when did this happen? This happened, I think it was uh, April, oh, just okay. during Ramadan, so I had to go, um, yeah, I had to go to, um, uh, Birmingham during Ramadan, oh, <laughs> yeah, really? to travel there. Yeah, it was 6 a.m. start, the unveiling. Um, so they told me before they told everyone else um, because I was one of the nine to get mm. chosen for the same. Um, so we did the unveiling, the media coverage and everything. So I was um, representing London um, mm. for the media coverage and stuff. So, yeah. You talk about representing. You're representing more than London. You know, what, like holding that torch at that moment, what did it feel like? Talk oh. me through the emotions. Well, uh, I was, 
it was just an amazing feeling. Um, I had my family was there. I had uh, Yashmin who nominated me. She was there. I had so many other people. Unfortunately, it, they would security check because there was another thing going on. Yeah. So a lot of people of my families missed out, couldn't do it. But the ones that were there, it was just so amazing. Um, uh, I was walking and then you had everyone clapping for me and it was just like the spotlight was, I mean, yeah. some, it was just overwhelming and it was just like, it was only a three minute walk. I was like, oh. I, don't, I don't want it to finish because I was, it, I was enjoying that moment because I felt quite proud, you know, and, mm. you know, my, for my family, it's something proud. My daughter, she's been like, telling her school and everything leading up to so. her. Yeah. And she was really upset. She was, she wanted to make me a poster and she's like, mom, I didn't get you. I said, it's fine, you know, but leading up to the whole, um, whole day is, um, mm. you know, the day I had a lot of publicity I've been doing Sky and a lot of interviews so you know it's just amazing journey yeah. yeah no we're gonna know more about that because honestly I've got so much to ask you but before we kind of talk any further we're gonna just watch a quick recipe yeah. and then I'm gonna kind of come back and speak to you a little bit about this recipe so this recipe is one of my favorites it's the payish um, so yeah let's have a little look So that was Dodo Lao Paish. I wasn't expecting that. Lao. Neither was I. What did you think of that? Um, I've tried it before. It's nice. Hey. Yeah, it, it actually goes with that um, dish, but I've not made it, no. Oh, no. I think I'm going to have to make it. I have not tried it. So I'm actually excited. I'm going to use the recipe for myself and actually make some. Yes. Yeah, try it. It's nice. Uh, so now, guys, we're going to watch um, a little song. Um, it's a famous um, ba um, Bangla song. Um, it's called Shorate Shesh Take by Prithom Hassan. And then we're going to go for a little break and we're going to be back and we're going to speak more to Yasmin because we've got so much to ask her. So, yeah. 